me briefly remind you we are doing uh, recommended systems. Uh, so we have a table. So each user view has its row and each item, for example a movie, has a column. So let's call it I just for item. And here we have a, rank, uh, a rating row view I, right? And uh, in this table, uh, only a few uh, um, cells are filled, so most of it is blank, right? Because each user has seen only a relatively small fraction of all uh, movies. Right? So this is an item J, and then here you have another user B, which may overlap uh, on some, for some movies they have seen they have both seen the same movie, the same movie, but uh, on, uh, of course, uh, quite often this won't be the case, right? And uh, so the dimension of this matrix, uh, let's call it uh, R, is the number of uh, users times uh, times the number of movies. So, uh, and on average, uh, uh, only 1% uh, is uh, uh, non-empty. So, which is actually uh, rules out uh, quite a few users because 1% uh, uh, just not such a big fraction of, uh, um, of um, users would have seen 1% of uh, uh, thousands of movies that are um, out there, right? Um, in the case of Netflix challenge, uh, the size of the matrix was uh, several billions, uh, right? The number of movies was uh, uh, 17,000, uh, I believe, uh, and number of users was uh, uh, in millions, if I, was it in millions or maybe hundreds of thousands, I'm, I'm not sure, right? So. Uh, essentially, so what is the task of a recommender system? Given the rankings of the, or ratings of the movies of a user, you want to uh, recommend some of the movies that this user has not seen with the highest possible likelihood that the user will uh, like uh, that movie. So essentially, if you think about this, it's we want to, in some consistent way, in a way consistent with the taste of the user, we want to fill the blank spots, right? And pick uh, among these black spots ones that uh, get the highest guest rating, right? So this is essentially what the recommender, what, how you can see recommender systems as methods of uh, 
filling the blanks in this huge table in a consistent way. Yeah? <coughs> okay, so <coughs> uh, the first method that we covered last time is called the neighborhood method. Huh? Is it like this? Uh, Misspelled? Yes. Yes. Oh, what a surprise. How do you spell it correctly? There's a call. N E I G H B O U R. H B O U. Okay. Uh, method. Uh, and there are two flavors. Huh? Um, and essentially, uh, uh, the one is uh, finding uh, similarity among users. And the second one is uh, finding similarity among uh, movies. Uh. And of course, you can combine uh, the two methods. As I mentioned last time, the winning uh, algorithm for Netflix challenge was a concussion of, uh, I think, hundreds of algorithms whose predicted scores then you take a weighted average <coughs> right with kind of empirically obtained uh, uh, weights so uh, essentially so what is the idea first the idea is to pre-process this table uh, to remove either something that is entirely uninformative and uh, uh, also to remove uh, things that uh, had kind of a uh, very simple explanation, which would be uh, bias of the users and bias of the movies. Actually, in the textbook, uh, he does one extra step. Uh, first, what we can do is uh, uh, we can compute uh, the mean uh, rating of all uh, uh, of all movies over all uh, users. I uh, we simply find the sum of all uh, row uh, of ui when uh, u and i are such that uh, user u has rated uh, movie i right so you simply sum all of them uh, divided by the number of elements you have uh, so it will be just the cardinality of all pairs um, u and i such that uh, u has uh, uh, rated uh, item i right and let's call this uh, uh, mean rho zero right so what is rho zero it's simply the mean of all the marks in the table. And the idea is uh, uh, you can then remove this mean from uh, all the rankings. So uh, we will form a table of all uh, u i minus rho 0. Right? 
So this will simply uh, remove uh, the mean of all items. So in the new table, some entries will be positive and some entries negative. Uh, so uh, when would an entry be uh, negative? For what movies? Uh? Anything less than the mean? Exactly. All movies that are below the average popularity, so to speak. Uh, so negative scores will indicate less popular movies uh, and positive scores will indicate more, um, more popular movies. Okay? So uh, now, um, so that's kind of very basic step. Uh, the next step, what we did is uh, uh, we now remove uh, the bias, systematic bias that a user might have and systematic bias that movie might have. So systematic bias of a user would mean that he tends to give, for example, all movies a higher marks, say between three and five. So his mean would be large, right? And uh, 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 other users might be very critical, so the mean of all marks that they give uh, might be um, uh, smaller, right? <coughs> and uh, we want to, because what we want to compare is, so to speak, a relative uh, qualities uh, uh, of the movies. So whether a user likes one movie better than the other, rather than on absolute scale, how much he likes a movie. So one way to do that, uh, so, how would you remove, uh, the simplest way to remove a bias? Uh, so we have now in this new matrix, right, that we remove the row zero. How would you remove the bias of, of a user? What would be the easiest but kind of coarse way of removing the bias of a user? Yes. You add it all up so that all exactly. Right. So you would compute the mean of all marks that a user has given. So one way that it's kind of a sloppy way of doing it. Uh, so second step. Uh, removing. Uh, uh, individual. Uh, bias of uh, users and uh, um, individual bias of uh, movies. So one would be tempted to do it in a simplistic way. So uh, you would replace, uh, uh, for every user u, you would replace raw ui by uh, raw ui minus, uh, let's call it uh, uh, ru, where ru is equal to uh, sum over all items i, so sum over all items i, such that u has uh, rated i, rho u, uh, let's use another letter, j, say, such that uh, the user has rated <coughs> this movie, divided again by the cardinality of the set of all j's, such that U has uh, uh, rated uh, movie J, right? But now, um, now we also want to remove uh, uh, the bias of the movie. What would be the bias uh, of a movie? A bias of a movie is that some movies, because 
of fashion or whatever tend to be at given moment overall population uh, uh, that their mean would be higher than the mean of some other movies. But again, we are interested in relative values, uh, whether I liked, uh, whether a movie is more according to my taste or less according to my taste, not uh, what is the absolute uh, uh, rating, so to speak, over all users of a movie, right? So uh, one way of doing it for all eyes, after you do this step, then for all uh, eyes, uh, you would map all the mappings, oh, sorry, all the ratings into row, so this would be over all eyes, right? Row u uh, i minus, uh, say, let's call it m i, where m i, uh, would be the mean of all ratings uh, that this particular movie got over all users i such that you rated i divided again by cardinality of uh, the set of all u's such that u has uh, ranked uh, rated item i. But notice, when you do the second step, you are likely to mess up the, what you've done in the first step, right? Because uh, uh, in which order should you remove the bias will produce different result, and this is counterintuitive. So instead of finding simple means, uh, we try to find the biases uh, in one go, both biases of the movies, and the bias of the users that uh, remove as much as possible uh, the, uh, the variation of the, or the, the, as much kind of uh, uh, information that is just uh, related, uh, explainable either by the user or by the movie. Okay, so how do we do instead of this? Uh, so we won't do that, but instead of this, uh, we will do the following. Uh, we will find, we solve the following least squares. Uh, we minimize the following sum, <coughs> sum over all users and all items such that uh, user i has rated, uh, sorry, user u has rated item i of rho u i. So uh, let's call, uh, let's call these values, uh, just so that we don't carry this, let's call it uh, u, rho u i hat, right? So we minimize rho u i uh, hat minus uh, the bias of user uh, u, so um, the bias, let's call it uh, uh, b of user u minus the bias of the movie i squared, right? So here, uh, b u and uh, uh, B, I are variables uh, and we find the values of the variables U, B, I and U, I that minimize this difference. Uh, notice the cardinality of the set of B, uh, U, uh, when U is a user, Right? Uh, let's uh, call it uh, capital U, set of all users, or just, uh, uh, let's see, uh, 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 there are in total uh, cardinality of U plus cardinality of I uh, many variables. 
So U is the uh, set of all users and I is the set of all movies. Uh, right, so in one go, right, uh, you fix, uh, you, you find, uh, so minimize over all of BU and all BI. Uh, so you find the values of these uh, variables. Uh, so this is for all u in u and i in i, right? You minimize this difference. Uh, so you are essentially taking out everything that is systematic offset for a uh, user and systematic offset for a movie. Yes? So can you? Well, I'm just reviewing what oh, we did on Tuesday. Yeah. So this is just a uh, list square. Um, this is called least square approximation, right? When you minimize the difference between your model and the uh, empirical data uh, that you uh, that you have, uh, right? Once we do that, um, uh, so uh, once we find uh, uh, values of uh, B U uh, and uh, also let's say values uh, 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 capital B U and uh, capital B I uh, of uh, variables uh, U I V uh, U and B I, which minimize uh, 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 the, the above sum uh, V replace uh, uh, row U I uh, hat with uh, uh, row U I bar which is equal to row U I hat minus B U minus B I right so for a fixed user u, we will be always uh, removing the same quantity here, and vice versa, if you fix uh, moving i, you will be removing the same quantity di, which would be kind of systematic bias of user and systematic bias of uh, uh, the movie, right? So are you with me so far? You, we are just reviewing what we did last time just uh, uh, because a few people complained that it was uh, uh, difficult to understand. But... Okay, so then what we do is we do the main step, which is finding correlations between users and uh, uh, movies, right? So that would be, I guess, third uh, step. Uh, and in the first version, let's find uh, find distance, quote unquote, uh, between users. Uh, what is this distance? This distance is the angle, so D of U1, U2 is the cosine of the angle between vectors rho U1, 
i, right? This is a vector, let me well, write it like this, uh, where i belongs to i, and uh, uh, vector rho u2 comma i, again, when i belongs to, uh, oh well, how do we do that? Uh, well, the problem is that these two vectors do not have the same support, right? Because users u1 and u2 might have seen different sets of movies. Uh, so we actually do that uh, for each fixed user to, for whom you want to make the recommendation. You will look only at other users whose domain, which movies they have seen, significantly overlaps with the U1, right? Uh, so uh, we will. So the idea is, uh, you take, um, uh, you map, you project this vector U1 i uh, that ranges over all i that, uh, right, so that uh, over all i such that u1 has watched uh, movie uh, i, you map it into vector, and here is, uh, does it bar, uh, uh, into the vector rho bar u1 i, into this vector, into this vector, where i goes, uh, belongs to the set uh, of all uh, uh, j's uh, such that, uh, such that uh, u has, uh, u1 has seen uh, j and uh, u2 has seen more j, <coughs> right? You simply ignore the coordinates, uh, uh, you simply look, so these will be the vectors that correspond to two uh, users. You simply look what are the coordinates that are non-empty for both of the users, right? So we take only ratings uh, of movies that both U1 has seen them and uh, U2 has seen them. Right? And then we simply take the, um, uh, D of user U1, U2 to be uh, this angle uh, between these uh, uh, two uh, movies, uh, so, so sorry, the, uh, the angle between these two vectors. So this would be what? Uh, it would be sum of uh, u rho u1 i times rho u2 i so that uh, i belongs to the set of indices j such that uh, u1 has seen j and uh, u2 has seen uh, j, right, overall. Divided now, what you want to do, and that, that's now an important step which you might <coughs> play with. Uh, when you see this product, uh, right, um, its significance, so to speak, uh, would depend uh, on the size of the overlap, uh, right? Um, and you want to kind of find absolute similarity between users that is independent on how many movies they have seen together. This might not be a good idea. Maybe one should in fact allow that uh, the uh, value of this angle actually does depend a little bit on the set of uh, how big is the overlap set. but. Uh, in uh, uh, in general, um, so this is just the product, right? Product of rows uh, divided by square root of uh, rho u1 i 
squared, uh, right, uh, where i is such that uh, u1 has seen i and u2 has also seen i times square root of some of the squares of row uh, u2 i such that again i is such that u1 has seen i and u2 has seen i. Right? So this is really angle between these two vectors and we kind of take it that these users have similar tastes if the vectors point in the same direction. Right? They are kind of uh, equally influenced by the value of each of the coordinate of the common support. Right? And so now uh, you can fill the table in the following way. Uh, first of all, uh, the number of users is very large and to reduce the complexity of the algorithm, uh, so for each user, uh, I guess that would be the fourth step. Uh, for each user uh, u, uh, choose um, only users, uh, say, v, uh, k, such that the distance uh, between um, yes, uh, uh, so um, yeah, would it be uh, Alex? Yes. Uh, shouldn't there be a square on the second? Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, it is just the norm of the first vector divided times the norm of the second vector. What is this? This is simply sc scalar product rho u1 over all i's, right? Times, uh, sorry, comma, rho u2 over all i's divided by the norm rho u1 times norm of rho u2. Right, this is the cosine of the angle. So uh, now the, uh, the reason why I'm kind of pausing, uh, uh, this is not a very good idea to call it distance uh, uh, because uh, you want to pick the guys for which absolute value of du is large. But this doesn't mean that they are on large distance. That means that they are close together. So instead of close, calling this distance, uh, I guess last time we called it uh, correlation. So let's put this uh, cor here. It's better to right. Uh, so choose such that uh, uh, cor that absolute value of core uh, u uh, vk uh, is uh, large. You would simply compute all of these correlations, take the absolute values, and uh, pick only the u's for which this absolute value is the largest. So now you can make an educated guess for user u, so step five, uh, guess uh, what uh, rho u, uh, say, uh, p would be for movie p. Uh, which uh, user u 
has not seen as uh, the following, uh, sorry, and that would be your bar, right? As the following uh, weighted average you will set a raw bar of u uh, p to be equal <coughs> to the sum of uh, uh, d uh, u uk uh, and this would be sum over all uk uh, such that uh, the uk by absolute value is large, right? Uh, normalized by the sum of uh, all values d u, say, u, q, right, with the same overall possible, over the same set, right, uh, times uh, rho uh, uk uh, item p, right? So, you look at all guys, for which the correlation is large, among those, and you want to guess what, uh, what is here, say, right? So this is uh, your item B. And you want to guess what is the value here. <coughs> well, so what you do, you look for users, uh, that have seen that movie and whose correlation with the user u is large, right? So this value is large. And then among all such users, uh, you weigh their rankings or that movie by the factor that shows how closely